I forgot to mention, I usually try to mention that there might be some, some goopy pictures, but this, that's because, you know, that's the work, you know. But uh, anyway, you all did very well, so uh, that was a, another great uh, presentation. Uh, right now, we're going to change gears a tiny bit, and we're going to speak about how we can help you be, and how you can help yourself to become a better advocate. So right now, I'd like you to give a warm welcome to my wife, patient and founder of NCAN, Marianne Wayman. Oh, and write down some stuff as I walk by. We got uh, Q&A coming up next. Okay. All right, again, thank you all for being here. I'm sorry I was a little off this morning. Um, we are traveling, and we have our puppy at home and our bunny, and our dog sitter called to tell us our air conditioner went out. So we're trying to run around and do things and pull off a meeting at the same time. <laughs> so thank you all again for being here. I'm hoping that you all are getting really good ideas from these doctors and ideas of how to do your journey. So I want to talk a, bit, a little bit about how and can can help you, how Dave, where is he? OK. No. Oh. Getting coffee again. Did you make a mess again? Thank you. Um, and how Dave can help you along with your journey. Uh, okay. Down. There we go. Okay. So how NCAN was formed was um, I got diagnosed after seven years of being misdiagnosed in 2001. And at the time, the only organization out there was the Carcinoid Cancer Foundation. And I am going to be forever grateful for Dr. Warner and Monica Warner and them for being there for us. However, I got diagnosed on a Thursday evening. At the time, the Carcinoid Cancer Foundation only answered the phone on Tuesday to Thursday. At 5 o'clock, I got diagnosed. Nobody around. My doctor says to me, you have this cancer. You're going to be gone in five years. I had young children. Uh, totally freaked out, what's the first thing you do? You go on the computer and you say, okay, let me look up this disease. Yep, that's what the doctor said, five years. So after I got diagnosed and spoke to Monica Warner on that Monday, or that Tuesday, um, I said, well, you know, how do I do this journey? How do I get through this? And she's like, well, you know, there's a local support group that you can go to. Um, it meets on Thursday evenings out east. It's about an hour away at 6 o'clock. Robert worked a full-time job. He had to take off from work. We go running over to this meeting, walked in the door, and there's three people in the room. Three. I said, three people? This is all? And they said, well, you know, this rare, it's a very rare disease. And I said, OK. So we did the meeting, and then afterwards, um, Marianne opened up her mouth, which I never learned to shut up, and I really should. <laughs> it gets me into a lot of trouble. And I said to them, um, my sister is the director of a library in the middle of Long Island. Maybe we could go there and meet, and it would bring people from Manhattan, Long Island, out east, and everything else. So we went from three patients to 15 patients the first meeting. Get home from the meeting, and the phone rings, and it's the woman who was running the group and said, Hi, Marianne, I just wanted to congratulate you for a wonderful meeting. Oh, and by the way, congratulations, you're the new support group leader. <laughs> Hello? I've been diagnosed less than six months. What are you talking about? So I really formed a bond with Dr. Warner and Dr. Uh, and Monica Warner, and they kind of mentored me along the way. So what our mission is, is to bring awareness. When we started, there was no zebra, there was nothing. Robin and I are the ones that help form the zebra with nets. Um, you know, there's two reasons for it. One is when hearing hoofbeat think of horses, not zebras, that they're taught in medical school. But the true reason why we chose it was because no two net patients are exactly the same. We all have different symptoms. We respond to medication differently. And no two zebras have the same stripes. That their fingerprints are the stripes. And so that's why we use the zebra. So we started an awareness campaigns. We're here to help patients with their journey to make sure that you're getting the right care, make sure you're getting to the right doctors. Um, and you know, if you're not getting what you need from your doctor, you should fire them. 
Everybody thinks that you, you work for the doctor. No, the doctor works for you. Sorry, guys, I love you all. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, there are some specialists out there that won't give you what you need, and sometimes you have to go to others. So that's why I'm here. We work with medical professionals, like the wonderful doctors that we have here. Um, you know, in, 2000, in 2005, we had a conference in Philadelphia, and um, one of the patients said, if we can get 350 patients in a room, why aren't we getting 350 doctors in the room to educate them about this disease? So my friend Carrie Brento started and worked with some of the doctors to form Nanets, which is now the North American Neuroendocrine Tumor Society. And Dr. Howe was very lucky to be the chairman for a while. But what I'm telling you about Nanets is, every one of you go to your doctor's office at the holiday time. How many of you bring gifts to your doctors? How many of you give boxes of cookies or boxes of candy or anything like that? Is there anybody in the room that does that? Okay. Instead of doing that, I am challenging each one of you to find out if your doctor is a member of Nanets. If they're not a member of Nanets and they're not getting the continuing education, I want you to go on Nanets and register them and give them as a Christmas gift, as a thank you. Because they, by going to those meetings, they're going to get the most updated information. They're going to know about all the new research. They're going to know about all the clinical trials. And by doing that, you're improving your life. You are improving your life and improving other people's lives. So that's very, very important. The cookies and the candy, honestly, they don't really need. I got in trouble last time. They told me, yes, they do need the <laughs> They were like, how did you dare say that? I like when they bring me cookies and candy. I'm like, well, you don't need 800 boxes of cookies. Um, we want to bring awareness to the general public. What I'm asking you is there is a pin in each one of your bags. Wear that pin. Wear it out. Talk about the disease. If you see something, talking to your friends and family, this is nothing to be ashamed of, okay? I know that talking about diarrhea and abdominal pain is not the most pleasant thing to talk about, but you never know when you're talking to somebody if that person is gonna be a person that actually is being misdiagnosed. So when you talk to the general public, bring it up. Bob will tell you, I talk to everybody. Anybody, my kids will tell you, it's embarrassing. Um, but you know, you have to talk about it. It's something we all have. We all have bowel movements. We might not all go 20, 30 times a day like I did, but we all have it. So it's something to talk about. You help patients and families. We help patients and families. We answer the phone. When I got diagnosed and I didn't have anybody to talk to, it was the worst feeling in the world. And that's why we are family. I answer that phone every single day, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. When you call, you're not talking to a stranger. You're not talking to somebody reading off a script. You're not talking to somebody that's going to talk to you for 10 minutes and push you along. You're talking to me, and I care. I care about the patients. I want to make sure that you get the treatment you need. We cannot continue doing what we're doing without each and every one of you. And we're here to navigate the journey. So, we have a patient hotline. It's on every one of the brochures. It's on everything. Call anytime. Make sure you go to the website. The best thing you can do to be an advocate for yourself is being here at a conference. We have the big conference in Atlanta. It is going to be the biggest conference ever. We haven't been together in over three years since COVID. It is starting on Net Cancer Day. So that day, we're going to have the biggest party you've ever seen. <laughs> So we hope that you all can join us there. Send away for the free information packet. Join a local support group. And I'm going to be honest about the support groups. Being in person, there's nothing like being in person. There's nothing like being in this room together and looking face to face at other patients that are going through the same thing. Now there's many, many hundreds of Facebook pages for net patients. I run 48 of them, I know. But what I want you to think about when you're looking at those pages, People go on there to complain. You never hear a lot of positive stories. You don't hear survival stories of how for 30 years you've been having this disease, 21 years diagnosed, eight years off, 
25 years, you don't hear that on Facebook. All you hear is them bitching and complaining about what's going on. So I want you to take everything with a grain of salt, okay? On there, they're gonna tell you, you need a net specialist, you have to see a net specialist, you have to see a net specialist. Yes, we need you to see a net specialist. Once in a lifetime, you need to go and see a specialist to get a journey um, of how they're gonna proceed with your treatment. You know, a lot of people get nervous and say, well, you know, the, the uh, specialist is so far away and how am I gonna do this and everything else. These specialists are amazing. They will work with you. They will work with their local doctors because they cannot treat hundreds of thousands of patients. So they ne need to have a network. So go see a specialist, get your plan, work with the local doctor, and go back and forth. It's not something that you have to do every single day. And I think that a lot of people get very, very upset about that because they're like, you know, they're pushing the specialist, they're pushing the specialist, and they don't understand what it is to go to a specialist. You go there, you get all your records together, you send it to the specialist, and they decide if they're gonna help you. You go and visit them, work with them, they'll say, well, you know, if you need treatment monthly, like standostatin or lariatide or whatever, we'll help you find a local doctor, and a local doctor can treat you. You have your scans every six months, your blood work, and then you send it to them, and if there's a problem, then you have to go back. But it's not something that you have to do monthly. So that's a fallacy that's on the internet that I want to make sure that you understand. So, um, you know, don't, don't get panicked about it. We do a lot of awareness events. Um, Dave, hopefully, will be doing a walk this year. <laughs> we do a virtual walk. Um, we've been running the walks um, probably 15, 20 years, 15 years, I think 15 years. Um, my daughter started them. My daughter is outside at the desk. If anybody met her, she's Trisha. Trisha is also a patient. She's been a patient for over 10 years uh, along with me. Um, Trisha came home from school one day and said, Ma, there's walks for colon cancer, there's a walk for breast cancer, there's a walk for lupus. Why isn't there a walk for nets? And I said to her, Trisha, I, I have too much on my plate. I can't do it. And she said, don't worry, I got it under control. And she went out and she got the insurance, she got the walk, she got everything, and we had our first walk. And every year we do a walk in Long Island, and then we do a walk in Charlotte where she lived and now I live. And then we do a virtual walk. So you go on, you sign up, we send you a t-shirt, you go and walk with family and friends and raise money to bring awareness of this disease, to bring these programs to you, to also help with research. Last year we gave $80,000 to Dr. Chohan for, um, uh, uh, for research into high grades. Um, so this is where the money goes to. And we try to encourage you to be your best advocate. If you're not getting what you need, ask questions. When you go into a doctor, write down all the questions you have. The doctor might not be able to answer them right then and there, but at least if you have the questions, you, um, he'll be able to get to them. Maybe the nurse can take them and give it to you later on. Keep a diary of at least a week before you go to the doctor. Because I know each and every one of you do this, because I do it all the time. You walk into the doctor's office, you talk to the nurse, you tell her everything else, the doctor walks in. How's everything? Fine. Fine. How's the diarrhea? Fine. No problems. And then Robert will be there and going, you're lying. No, I'm not. I'm fine. No, you're lying. You've been in the bathroom 20 times. What are you talking about? You're, you're bright red. You're, you're flushing really, really bad. What are you talking about? I think we get a lot of the white coat syndrome when we go to the doctor's office. And we think about right in that moment when we're sitting in the office. And we don't think about what happened the day before or the day before that or the day before that. So by keeping a little bit of a journey, a journal to, to write down what did you eat, what, did you, what happened, did you have diarrhea, did you have any flushing episodes, that will help you remember to tell the doctor. Because if you don't tell the doctor, the doctor isn't going to know. Okay? For instance, I have lupus and I have ITP as well. And for many years of my misdiagnosis, a lot of my symptoms were carcinoid syndrome. But I wasn't telling the doctor the whole story. Had I told him I was flushing, or I had told him that I was, you know, he knew about the diarrhea because I had it for seven years, but I thought um, 
with my lupus, I was running fevers every night. So after a while, I just stopped taking my temperature and I would just pop Tylenol and everything else. And the doctor would say, how are the fevers? And I would go, fine. I never said to him, all of a sudden, you know, the last couple of years I've been getting these fevers during the day and I feel really crummy. I wasn't taking my temperature. I wasn't, you know, I thought I was feeling crummy. Well, what was actually happening is I was flushing the whole time, but I never told my doctor because I just assumed it was related to the lupus and the ITP and that that's what was going on. Had I told him, maybe five years earlier I might have been diagnosed. So if you don't tell the doctor, he can't read the mind. So you have to tell them everything. You have to be honest. You have to be honest about the bowel movements. You have to be honest about the flushing because they can't help us if we're not being honest with them. So we want you to advocate for yourself. Make sure you, you take care of yourselves. Oh, is that it? Okay. Oop. So um, we wanted to uh, inspire patients. And um, this is a very old photo. Um, there's Dr. Lowell Anthony and myself with Charlie Nutting. Um, down on the bottom, if, for the older people that have been here for a long time, it's Dr. Jean Waltering, um, Dr. Uh, Richard Warner, who was the founder of the Carcinoid Cancer Foundation back in 1968. Um, Bill Goh, and of course, our Thomas Odovicio, which we lost in February. Um, Thomas Odovicio was very special to us. Um, Tom was our first speaker back in 2003 when we started NCAN, and so he is extremely missed. So practice being a good advocate. Make sure you're networking. Everyone is sitting at the table with somebody that they don't know. Ask for the name and number or an email so you have another person to keep in touch with. Make sure you keep coming to events and learning. There are hundreds, hundreds of videos on our website of past conferences. Watch them. It, it, you know, it, it's always good to keep learning about things. Join a support group if you're local. Get in touch with uh, Dave. Um, reach out to a specialist. And if you're not getting with your doctor, it's time to find a new doctor and make sure your doctors join Nanitz. Oop, I'll leave that up. Okay. So um, does anybody have any questions like or concerns? Is everybody getting what they need from their doctors? Or are there anybody that um, are not getting the support that they need? Make sure you reach out to me and um, come outside and I'll be outside all day. Um, but I, I truly am really, really glad that you're all here because you're all taking an active role in your disease. And that's the only way that we're gonna save lives is being active. Um, you know, you have two choices in life. You either get up and fight or you lay down and die. And just by being here, I could see how many of you are willing to fight for your lives. And it's really inspiring. So thank you, and um, like I said, I'll be outside if anybody has any questions.